On May 19, 1975, a horrific robbery took place in Cleveland, Ohio. Harold Franks, a 59-year-old money order salesman, was leaving a neighborhood grocery store when two men confronted him, demanding his briefcase. Franks resisted, and in response, the attackers hit him with a pipe, splashed acid in his face, and shot him twice in the chest. Franks died at the scene, while Ann Robinson, the 58-year-old co-owner of the store, was also shot but survived. The attackers fled the scene in a green car with Franks's briefcase, which contained only $425. Within a week, police arrested 18-year-old Ricky Jackson and brothers Ronnie and Wiley Bridgman, based almost entirely on the testimony of 12-year-old Eddie Vernon. Vernon claimed he had seen Jackson shoot Franks and identified the Bridgman brothers as accomplices. Despite their clean records and a lack of physical evidence, all three were charged with aggravated murder, attempted murder, and robbery. The trials were swift. Each defendant was tried separately in Cuyahoga County Court, with the prosecution's case relying heavily on Vernon's testimony, despite the inconsistencies in his story. Initially, Vernon told police he was on the bus when he saw the attack from a distance. However, by the time of the trials, his story had shifted, and he claimed he saw the shooting after getting off the bus. Even though several of Vernon's classmates testified they had been on the bus with him and couldn't see the crime, the jury convicted all three men. No physical evidence or eyewitness other than Vernon linked Jackson or the Bridgman brothers to the crime. On August 12, 1975, Wiley Bridgman was the first to be convicted, followed by Jackson and Ronnie Bridgman. All three men were sentenced to death, but their sentences were commuted to life in prison after a brief period ordered the encounter, and Bridgman's parole was revoked. The case took a dramatic turn in 2011, when Cleveland Scene Magazine published an investigative article that brought new attention to the many inconsistencies in Vernon's testimony and the lack of evidence linking the men to the crime. It was revealed that Vernon had been paid $50 by Ann Robinson's husband for his testimony something he hadn't disclosed at trial. This raised questions about the validity of his statements and the pressure he faced as a young boy involved in such a high-profile case. Reporter Kyle Swenson, who wrote the article, reached out to Vernon for comment, but Vernon refused to talk about the case. Eventually, Swenson connected with Vernon's pastor, Arthur Singleton. After reading the article, Singleton approached Vernon again in 2013 while Vernon was hospitalized. It was during this visit that Vernon finally confessed that he had lied during the trials. He broke down in tears and admitted to his pastor that he never saw the crime take place. Vernon said he was coerced by police into identifying Jackson and the Bridgmans, and when he tried to recant his statement, the police told him it was too late and threatened to arrest his parents if he changed his story. Vernon's confession set off a chain of events that led to the involvement of the Ohio Innocence Project. Attorneys Brian Howe and Mark Godsey took up the case, uncovering police reports that showed Vernon had tried to recant his testimony even before the trials, but was intimidated into sticking with the false story. They also discovered that police had initially investigated other suspects, including two men named Paul Gardenshire and Ishmael Hickson. Hickson's car, which matched the description of the getaway vehicle, was found to have been used in other robberies, but the police had dropped this line of inquiry after Vernon identified Jackson and the Bridgmans. In November 2014, a hearing was held to review the new evidence. During the hearing, Vernon testified that his entire story had been fabricated, he admitted he was on the bus when he heard what he thought were firecrackers but was nowhere near the scene of the crime. Vernon explained that after hearing rumors in the neighborhood about the crime, he told police he knew who did it, thinking he was helping. However, when he realized his mistake, police forced him to stick to the false narrative by threatening his family. With this explosive new testimony, Cuyahoga County prosecutors conceded that the original convictions were based on false information. On November 18, 2014, the state announced they would no longer contest the motion for a new trial. Just days later, 
a judge vacated the convictions of Ricky Jackson and Wiley Bridgman. Both men were immediately released from prison after spending 39 years behind bars. Jackson's 39 years, three months, and nine days marked the longest wrongful imprisonment in U.S. history at that time. Ronnie Bridgman, who had since changed his name to Kwame Ajamu, had been paroled in 2003. His conviction was also vacated shortly after Jackson and Wiley's release, and in December 2014, all charges against the men were formally dropped. Following their exoneration, the men began to receive compensation for their wrongful convictions. In 2015, Ricky Jackson was preliminarily awarded $1 million in compensation, with final settlements coming later. In 2016, the state of Ohio awarded Wiley Bridgman $2.4 million and Kwame Ajamu $1.98 million. Ricky Jackson settled his own claim for $2.65 million. In addition to the state compensation, the men filed a federal civil rights lawsuit against the city of Cleveland. That case was initially dismissed, but later reinstated. And in May 2020, a settlement was reached, with Jackson receiving $7.2 million and Ajamu and Bridgman each receiving $5.4 million. Tragically, Wiley Bridgman passed away in June 2021 from complications related to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease just a few years after his release. In 2022, Ricky Jackson co-produced a documentary titled Lovely Jackson, which chronicles his wrongful conviction and long road to freedom, giving the public an inside look at the devastating effects of wrongful imprisonment and the power of perseverance. The case of Ricky Jackson, Kwame Ajamu, and Wiley Bridgman remains a powerful reminder of the flaws in the criminal justice system and the importance of seeking the truth no matter how much time has passed. Before we go, I wanted to share something Wiley wrote with you. An excerpt from Wiley's book of poetry, There's a Something I Meant to Tell You, a compilation of poetry and prose where each poem is depicted by its following prose. Growing, staying young. You helped me as we skated, something my years had never done. Your aurora glowed relating, growing, staying young, as everything we seemed to do, a miracle took place, elevating me and you and our youth adorned our face. I'm happy with our everything, the same as our day one. Our experiences will always ring. Growing, staying young. Pros. Speak, Rose. Sparkling beauty. Who's greater than we being? You shall grow as I shall grow. Resplendence worth a seeing. Have we not forgotten that? A day our blooms are done? Or do we live to exonerate? Growing, staying young. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. We hope you found the story of Ricky Jackson, Kwame Ajamu, and Wiley Bridgman both powerful and eye-opening. These stories of wrongful convictions remind us how crucial it is to question the justice system and fight for those who have been wronged. If you found this episode compelling, be sure to stay tuned for more stories of wrongful convictions, injustice, and the fight for freedom. Together, we can shed light on these cases and continue the conversation about reform. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time with another story that needs to be heard. Take care.